Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome. I'm so glad you found me. In today's crafting adventure, I'm going to show you two different ways on how to make a sign. Now you can either use this sign to hang on your wall as decor, or you can use it to put on a wreath. All of the materials with the exception of the paint that I used for both projects came from Dollar Tree. Let me show you how to make them. For both of the projects, I'm going to be using this round sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. This came out of this year's summer collection, and I bought it because I like that it's a round sign. Now you can do this technique on any shape or size of sign that you want. It all depends on what image you want to produce. But we're going to be doing both of them on this one. I bought two of these. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is remove this and take off any uh, stickers that they may have on the back of your sign. I remove the hanger and I also remove the tag. Next you want to take some sandpaper and just do a light sanding over the back. You want to make sure you've removed all of the sticky residue and that it's relatively smooth. Once you have it nice and smooth, then you want to just sandpaper right around the edge. You want to keep that nice and clean. Usually the front edge where the image is is nice and clean, but the back edge tends to be a little rough. So just take your sandpaper and smooth that out. Now on the front here, we do have a lot of glitter and I don't want to have glitter fall out while I'm working on this. So I'm going to take my sandpaper and go ahead and sand off all of that glitter. And to make it easy on myself for cleanup, I'm just going to hold this over my garbage can while I sand so everything goes right into the garbage can. Okay, I got most of the glitter off. There's still some that's die hard that's just not going to come off, but that's okay. Um, I know at least now I'm not going to have glitter everywhere while I'm working on it. Now, I'm not going to worry about the back. Once I'm completely done making the sign, I will cover the back in brown craft paper. Next, you're going to want to put a good coat of white paint. You can either use white acrylic paint or you can use craft paint, whatever you have on hand. I'm going to be using the Apple Barrel White paint. Now, uh, cardboard is just like wood. It will absorb a lot of the paint. And since there's nothing over this, you will need to put about two coats down. And I just tend to pour it right onto the project when it's this big. And while you're painting, you want to make sure that you get the little edge too. That'll just make it look much more finished and professional looking. So go ahead and give the back of the sign two good coats of white paint. In the description box below is a detailed list of the tools and materials I use to complete each project. Now while we're waiting for the paint to dry, I'm going to show you what I'm using for my first sign and it's going to be this framed home decor. Now I really loved the print. The only one I could find though came in a broken frame, which was fine because I knew I was going to reuse it. So go ahead and remove everything out of the frame and pull the print out because that's what we're going to be using. So I have my print out. And for your information, if you do find something like this where either the glass is cracked or maybe the frame is broken and all you want is the print, when you get to the register, ask for a discount. They'll usually sell it to you for 50 cents or 25 cents. 
Okay, now my print here is square, but my form is round. That's okay. I'm just going to center this, and then after I get it down, I'll go back and trim off with my utility knife. Now how I'm going to attach this is just by using some matte Mod Podge. I'm just going to put some down. I want a nice thin coat, just enough to hold it on there. I am going to go over the top with it as well. But I don't want to get really any wrinkles or anything like that. So I just want a really light coat down first, just enough to kind of stick it in place. Now you can use this with any print that you find, any type of paper. You can also design something on your computer and print it out and use that to make a sign. So your possibilities are limitless. Okay, and then go ahead and get your print placed where you want it. Work from the center, make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, and then once you get it down, go ahead and lay another coat of Mod Podge over the top. sure you get all those ends down nice and secure. If you enjoy craft tutorials and learning new craft techniques, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be the first to know every time I upload new content. Now my sign is all dry, the Mod Podge dried up. Now I'm a little disappointed. I do have some wrinkles in there. Now that is uh, most likely because I didn't get enough down or it dried before I got the paper on uh, the bottom coat. So I'm still going to use this because I'm gonna do a lot of distressing. I'm gonna add some planking. So I'm hoping that by the time I'm done, that's not going to be noticeable. Plus I'm planning on putting this one on a wreath. So there's gonna be a lot of things going on. I don't think you're going to notice it once we're done. You're gonna need a ruler and just measure your piece out. This is uh, at this length here, 10 inches. So I'm going to mark that at about every two inches. I wanna put a plank. I just want to give myself a reference point. And then I'm going to use my pencil and just draw out a line where I want to put a plank. I will be going over this later with some Waverly Antique Wax. This is just so I know where I want to go. So go through and mark all of your planks, just like that. I got my lines down. I went ahead with a detail brush and some of the Waverly Antique Wax and just roughly went over my lines. Now I'm going to let this dry before we move on to the next step. For that, you're going to need more of a rough brush. I really like using this one because the bristles are really rough. 
Uh, if you have an old brush like this, that's perfect. If not, you can always take something that's like this. I got this in like a two or three pack from the Dollar Tree. And then you can just kind of cut in with some scissors at the top to get that a little bit rugged and that will help you. When this is dry, all you need to do is go in, add a little bit there, take off any excess. And I always like to start around the edge and then you're just going to kind of go back and forth here and there around the edge to distribute some. And then just kind of take your brush once you got the majority of it off and then start to go around. You can also drag through slightly. This will add a little bit more texture. And then just add a little bit at a time. You can always go back and add more. And if you get too much on, that's okay. I can show you what you can do to fix that. So just continue to add a little bit around the edges and then blend it in. You don't want to try to blend it until you get the majority of that paint off, whether you tap it off or I usually try to just get it around the edges because I like my edges to have a little bit more. And then just kind of quickly drag through. Now you can see this is darkening it and giving it more texture, kind of hiding that shine and blending in those imperfections. So just add as much antique wax as you like. Go back and add a little bit around the edges again. I really like that when they're a little darker. Sometimes just kind of, but on something like this that's planked, you want to make sure that your strokes are going in the same direction as the plank. Otherwise it won't look cohesive. Around the edges, you can get away with a little bit more texture, but going through the center, you really want to make sure that's all going in the same direction. Once you get it the way you like it, go ahead and set that aside. You want to let it dry, and then I'll show you if you need to correct anything if you got too much on. I'll show you how to fix that but you wanna let this dry first. I have all my antiquing done on this. Now I do wanna add a little bit more dimension and in this stage I can cover up if I did too much of the antiquing wax. And I'm just using a very small amount of the apple barrel white and the same rough brush. And again, I'm gonna do the dry brush technique, just put a small amount, take the majority off and then just lightly brush through. For me, if I go quick, I can usually get it nice and light and not too much. This will just give an additional dimension and help to kind of blend everything together to make it more cohesive. And again, this is not perfect. This is supposed to be rustic. And with the paint, once you get it down, if you get too much, again, you can always go back with the antique wax and add a little bit more. So don't be afraid to layer it until you get it to look the way that you want. It's only going to give you more dimension. I mean, at some point you will get too much, but you know, you can always go back once or twice. And there you go. I think that looks really nice and I think it'll look really pretty in the center of a wreath. Now you want to set that aside and let it fully dry before you use it. Now for our second sign, we prepare the board the same way. Uh, sand off any glitter off the back and get uh, two good coats of white paint on the back. 
And for this sign, we're going to be using one of these. Um, this is over where all the wall creations are. This is a sticker that you can stick on your wall and you can easily remove it. These are great to use to make your own signs. Now for this one, I am going to cut this B out and place it in a different spot because this sign is a lot longer and I don't want it to go just down the center. So I'm going to cut my B out and I want to start this part up near the top and I'm going to do it slightly kind of off center so I can place my B over here. And then I'm going to come down and then I'm going to trim it here so it fits on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. So I have my pieces cut out, my B is separate. And then I have this little piece left, which I will probably use. And then I have this center piece, which like I said, I'm going to do just slightly kind of off center. So that I have room to put maybe another bee here. And then maybe put like this. So the first piece I'm going to get laid down is my center piece here. And these are great. These have a clear backing, so you can put it on any color background that you want. They peel off. They are sticky, but they will allow you to lay it down and lift it up a few times until you can get it placed exactly where you want it. So just rub it on. Like I said, these are slightly sticky, so they attach very well. You don't have to lay any Mod Podge down prior. You just get it in place. Now to clean up, I have a little bit of excess here and here. Just gonna turn this over and use my utility knife to clean that up. Now this is a safe cutting surface. Just press down and lightly go over until the excess releases. And so there you go, that's your first piece down. Next, I'm going to lay in my B and I want to put him over here. Now you can always trim the clear area however you want. So if you have any big excess pieces, just take them off. And then feel free to place your B wherever you like. And then this piece I'm going to place up here to help fill in this open space. And this is the piece I cut off the bottom. So I'm just going to lay it on the side here. Try to get it where the nicest parts will show. have all my pieces down. Now at this point, if you have other stickers that will go along with this, maybe some more bees or some other florals that are close to this, you can always add those. But I'm going to leave it like this. And now we're going to give it a nice coat. I'm going to be using the Mod, uh, Matte Mod Podge. And I really like this stuff over these because unlike paper, they do not lift and wrinkle. Go ahead and give your sign a nice coat of the matte Mod Podge. So 
once you get everything covered, you want to make sure to go through and keep your strokes in the same direction. Sometimes with the Mod Podge, you can really see the strokes, so it looks much nicer if they're all going in the same direction. And you want to set that aside and let it fully dry. My Mod Podge is completely dry and the surface is completely smooth. I love it. There are no lifts, bumps, or bubbles. So on this one, I'm going to add a little bit of distressing or antiquing using the khaki paint. Uh, the antique wax is a little dark for this one, so that's why I'm going to be using uh, the khaki. Just put a little bit of paint in your container. You want to use a rough brush for this. Just get a small amount of paint. Dab off any excess. And I always like to start around the edges. Just go and pull from the outside in all the way around. This also helps to get the majority of the paint off the brush. You just want to make sure that you're even all the way around. And then once you get all the way around the edge and you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, then you just gently go back and forth. You want to keep your strokes going in the same direction. You can evenly distribute and blend in some throughout the sun. So you can add as much or as little as you want. I don't want a whole lot on this one. I want it to stay kind of bright and cheery. But this just kind of helps to blend everything in and makes it look cohesive. And there you go. Go ahead and set this aside and let it dry. My khaki is all dry. Now I'm going to go in with some white and blend it even further. Doing the same thing, just adding a small amount to my brush. And then just going through quickly and blending in some of that white. This just helps everything blend together even better and makes it look more cohesive. You can do as little or as much as you like until you get it to the way you like it. There you go. Now I have my white on top. I think that looks really good. I think it blends everything in and it's still nice and light. Now, if you uh, don't want to use this on a wreath, you can always uh, run some jute cord through the hole and hang it. If you're going to hang it on the wall, um, I would add a little bit more, like maybe a, a cute little bow. You can also add maybe some florals. So maybe do a little bit there, a little bit there, right up near the top and then put a little bow in the center. So you could do something like that if you just wanted to hang the sign on the wall. I'm planning on using both of these on wreaths, so I'm not going to add any further adornment. So the final step to finish off the sign is I'm going to put some brown paper on the backing of the sign. I'm just going to use an Avery glue stick to do that. So I'm going to just take a big piece of the brown paper, turn my sign over, and give a good coating of the glue. This 
this way if you're using it just as a sign the back is finished and it looks nice and clean if you do put it on a wreath um, if it's maybe on a glass door or something like that and you can see the center in the back you want to make sure that that's nice and clean Just flip that over, clean up any excess from around the edge. And I'm just going to slide my cutting mat underneath and use my utility knife to go ahead and cut that out. I'm just going to press down and then trim all the way around to get a nice clean backing. here we go we're all done with both of our signs I think they came out absolutely beautiful and look by just putting a piece of the brown craft paper on the back it makes it look nice and clean and very professional well I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial if you did please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments this really does help support my channel it lets YouTube know that I have content that's worth watching if you enjoy craft tutorials, make sure to check these out. Thanks again. You have a great day and I will catch you next time.